welcome to this review of this colored keyboard thing. It's got some kind of model name somewhere, but I can't remember it. So, as you might have guessed, this appears to be another one of those keyboards intended for kids, as can be judged by the large, colorful keycaps. This one is almost unused, and it's one of many I found at the recycling center. Perhaps surprisingly, these keyboards were pretty common to find there, and because of their striking looks, the guys would always hold them back for me. I've previously done a video about a similar looking keyboard called the Big Keys LX by Greystone, but that was meant for use in nuclear power stations. Somehow, I don't get the feeling that one was meant for that. Perhaps the biggest difference between these two is that the Big Keys LX is a mechanical keyboard which uses SKBM ALP switches, while the color thing is a rubber dome keyboard of the utmost sponginess. In all fairness, it is exceptionally quiet even for a rubber dome keyboard. In fact, it's one of the quietest keyboards I've ever seen. Possibly this was done so that your kid doesn't make too much noise when he or she is ramming on the thing in their blind zeal, but more likely it was done out of cheapness. It has a huge feel of cheapness about it, actually. It's very light and built completely out of plastic. And despite the cheery colors of the keycap, somehow this keyboard looks to me like it's actually crying on the inside. Alas, to my great dismay, it is a USB keyboard and it even works, so unfortunately I had no excuse to not use it, to the great chagrin of some of my friends that I play video games with, because it's exceptionally badly suited to that task. I hope you guys appreciate the depth to which I review keyboards, because they sure as hell didn't. <laughs> Looking at the layout, you can quickly see why. First off, it's an ortholinear layout, meaning that there's no staggering between the rows. The keys form a square grid. This means that basically none of the keys are where you think they are, which is highly ergonomic or something. Second, the keys are massive. And as a result of this, the keys aren't only in the wrong place, but they're also much further away from each other than normal. And in many cases, your fingers don't stretch all the way. When you think about this, this seems to be opposite of what should be the case for kids. If anything, kids' keyboard should have smaller keys to accommodate for their smaller, shorter fingers. Third, the layout is weird as all hell. There's only one control key and they conveniently shifted it to the right because that way it's a lot less accessible than it would otherwise have been. It's perfectly in the way of your own hand while you're playing video games, so it's basically impossible to use in those cases. There's also only one alt and the positions of tons of other keys, especially punctuation marks, are very different, which makes typing even a basic email rather confounding and only one shift, which is the one I never type with. Great, but at least it has a massive escape key in a place where you absolutely wouldn't expect it. So there's that. And the arrow keys are in a diamond nav, which is worse than the ubiquitous and much more convenient T nav you get on normal boards. And to top it all off, it's ANSI. Fourth, some keys are actually missing, which again doesn't really help with usability. All the F keys are gone and haven't found a way to access them using layer keys or something. And of course the numpad, but that's because all them kids want to be gamers of course. The keycaps are ABS with pad printed legends in what appears to be Comic Sans or some other awful font that surely even kids would cry at. And they're color coded with purple for the vowels, green for the consonants, yellow for the punctuation marks, red for the numbers and blue for everything else. In all fairness, that's actually pretty useful on this board because it helps you navigate the useless layout a bit better. As I mentioned, it's a rubber dome board of a particularly vile type and the key feel feels like what I would imagine it'd be like to type on dead beavers' intestines. I mean, it's not the absolute worst I've ever felt. There's always the Fold 2000 after all, which stills hold the record for most horrible piece of diabolical dog shit to date, but it's much worse than even a bog standard rubber dome office keyboard. All this comes together to form a conflux of awfulness that resists having any sort of genuine purpose or usefulness. When your friends are begging you repeatedly to change keyboard just because you can't reach the jump key or because you're suddenly handicapped out of reloading, throwing grenades, changing weapons or other basic features we normally take for granted, you suddenly appreciate how useful the simple things in life are, such as a control button that you can actually reach, or uh, say the presence of an F2 or F5 or F10 or F12 button. That's right, you can't even refresh internet pages with this keyboard. Yeah, I know, it's made for kids and all, but <laughs> I mean, just look at it. Would you really want to handicap your kids with this? 
Why teach them to type on a keyboard that will forever skew their perception of a proper layout? Just let them train on a layout that will one day be actually useful to them for fuck's sake. Also, yesterday, the two W, S, X, and caps lock keys randomly stopped working, so it seems there is a trace issue somewhere with it. So, all in all, if you want to play a cruel prank on your offspring or some annoying nephew you've got somewhere, this is perfect for it, but otherwise, avoid this stinking pile of goat shit. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard. Wait, that's not right, is it? Um, I think it's actually more supposed to be used like this.